As we have said, the blood of many, many proud people flow through our bodies, as well as this land that we are occupying today. This little piece of area that you have mentioned and have so graciously named back in an original name, those ideas is the same indication of what is happening in this world, in this country, that that little indication of the willingness to support such ideas that return back the history, the pride, and the continuing history of our nation here, which includes Native peoples. Manhattan, of course, you know, $24, they said in those days. But today, let us look upon this occasion as a opening to continue this beautiful and proud relationship that we have. We know that what our road here has consisted of, the death and destruction of Native peoples, of course, is a part of our reality. But we have to think about the future. Seven generations from now, let's hope that those children that are looking upon this particular piece of land and who are enjoying that particular piece of land will speak proudly of us. And your actions here today will be recorded as such. So this is what we want to say in that sense that, yes, let's start anew. And let's start by acknowledging that proud and that continuous history that we have come to know as Manhattan, North America, United States. But Lakota people and Native peoples elsewhere know this particular place as the Turtle Island. A lot of people don't uh, really realize the importance of names. I mean, naming among Indian people is perhaps, uh, or among tribal people generally, I guess, is a, a very important concept because the name contains not only um, a descriptive, it's also the spirit or the soul of a place or an individual, however that name may be applied. And I think by changing this name back to the American Indian name that it had initially among the uh, Lenape people, I think signifies perhaps the, the importance of the spirituality of the place. Because you go there and you do feel one with nature. I mean, because it is uh, such a magnificent place. The Native American Heritage Committee is a multicultural committee. We work together. And beginning last year, when our theme was preserving the Inwood Hill Forest, thoughts began last fall at this time about what our theme this year might be and what might we do in 1992 to keep some promises that were made and not kept. And one of the women of the committee made a suggestion that perhaps restoring the original Native American name to this the last natural place on Manhattan would be appropriate. And so we began the work. No, I don't. Okay. No, I live right by there. Okay. Well, you should sign the petition then in regards to the changing of the name of Inwood back to its right. Indian name, okay. which you can do there on the yeah. Hi, I'm Stephanie Bettencourt, and I'm here on 42nd Street in the middle of New York, Manhattan, and we are here representing the Native American Heritage Committee. And what is the Native American Heritage Committee? Well, we're an, a group of organizations, ad hoc group of organizations, who have come together to celebrate Native American heritage in many kinds of ways. Uh, we're supposed to have, we are going to have, a uh, festival at Inwood Park in Manhattan. 
And this year is, speci is especially important because we expect to have a name restoration to the park, to the 90% of the natural area of the park, which is, uh, <clears throat> the original name is Shirakapan. And we're really pushing for this. Right now we're in the process of, um, of speaking to our government people, our council people, to promote this in the council, in the city council meeting, so that this will go through by, by September. And we're really pushing for that, and we're really hoping that uh, it will come through. So keep your fingers crossed. They're signing them right and left. Uh, we also work with the Native American Heritage Committee. And one activity we've been uh, participating in is the move towards restoring the name of Inwood Park to Shirakopic, the old Delaware name for that area. And it looks very good. I think changing the name of the park to its old name would be a memorial to the native people who lived here. And it would be a gesture of thank you. After some investigation, we approached the local community board who eagerly embraced the idea and proposed it to Councilman Stanley Michael. His love for the park and respect for Native American heritage propelled the issue to the city council where it was passed with great joy unanimously. Share, no, that's not good. Share, not sure. Share, uh, copy, my copy, share, copy, copy. The councilman Michaels and I are discussing the appropriate Pronounce, pronunciation of S H O R A K A P O K. Anybody want to help us with that? <laughs> we have some of our Native American friends here today who will be talking sure. to this. Share a copy. Share a copy. Share a copy. Right. We'll see how it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and Lenny Lenache, I like the Yiddish. The second bill is introductory number 512, sponsored by City Council member Stanley Michaels, who's responsible for the pronunciation. <laughs> this proposed local law would name an area within the boundaries of Inwood Hill Park in Manhattan, Sharaka Park. That bad, huh? Listen, well, you got it, you got it. Sharaka Park Natural Area. The area would be bounded on the south by Dykeman Street, on the west by the Amtrak Railroad right-of-way, on the north by the U.S. Pierhead and Bulk Line, and on the east by an irregular line on the Department of Parks and Recreation map number MRW42-2200. For thousands of years, Native Americans lived on land which today is known as Washington Heights and Inwood in Manhattan. This area included a large area within Inwood Hill Park. The name given to such land by the Lenape. Lenape language. expert over here. I'm getting this. <laughs> was Shirakapak. This Native American name means edge of the river and properly describes the location along the Hudson of Inwood Hill Park. The restoration of the original name of this large area of Inwood Hill Park will acknowledge the historical Native American presence in this area and therefore serve as a strong reminder to present day Americans of the proud heritage of the American, Native American people. Is, in order to do this, we are revealing one of the uh, secrets of our, our community, and that is this park, which is probably the last natural park in Manhattan, one of the most beautiful areas, and I urge those of you who have not uh, been up there, perhaps come up on the 19th of this month, where there's going to be a uh, heritage festival. Uh, it is one of the most beautiful parts of all of Manhattan and probably of the city of New York, with natural, natural uh, growths there and, and, and birds and everything. It's really something that everybody should really much enjoy. And I'm pleased to have been able to sponsor this legislation at the behest of the Native American Heritage Committee, many of which are here tonight, and I, I'm sure they wish to comment on it. In our city, the Council on August 26, 1992, voted to restore the original Native American name to the last natural place in Manhattan. This is a call to remember the native part of the family of New York. It is a promise kept to the first people. All New Yorkers share in this remembrance. We say to all those whose ancestry runs back to the beginning of time in this place, welcome home to the land that was and is your own. I'd just like to say that 
Our traditions tell us that in the very beginning, the Creator placed us here and gave us instructions on how to use all the plants and animals of the earth and taught us how to take care of our mother, the earth. And one of the important things that we were always told was that you have to give things back. You can't keep taking without returning something. And today, we're returning something. We're returning the original name to this place. I think it's very appropriate that we do that. And in a way, it's a recognition of all the Native American people who, as individuals in this city and as organizations such as the Native American Heritage Committee, the National Museum of the American Indian, the American Indian Community House, the Tainos del Norte, and other organizations, that we are still here. I would like to say that one of the most uh, significant things in honoring this place in New York is that we're not looking to the rainforest or outside of New York City to deal with our lives. It's about working, starting at home. And this is one of the ways we can start by becoming aware that we do have this natural environment and that we can change things in, in New York City. So this can be a model for things not just a, a, a gesture. Join us for a photograph as we, as we sign this. Please, everyone is welcome. Please come. How are you? Good. You've done good, Stanley. You've done good, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you take a, a picture with that camera right down there? On the back, behind the chair. Yeah. The Brooklyn boys called up angry because they thought Columbus was being dished. <laughs> and by the time that conversation was over, they were turned around and they were talking to the other guys in Brooklyn so that Brooklyn would vote unanimously as a block. So that was kind of an interesting they were so shocked to find out that you could be four Native Americans and not be anti-Columbus. We've worked really hard for the name restoration of Shore Kapak, and our hard work has paid off, and I'm happy that it's happened. I think it does honor to the people, the Delaware people who originally lived here. These people respected and cared for this tract of Mother Earth called Shore Kapak. And today, every day that we walk through the park, we enjoy the fruits of that respect and care. And I thank all the people who made this possible, and I thank the Great Spirit. Delaware, but the majority of the tribe is in Oklahoma, and a large group 
are, are on three reservations in Canada, and they're here today to represent their people. Uh, we also have some in Pennsylvania and a few in the state of Delaware. <laughs> now, at uh, four years ago, I had the uh, uh, pleasure to go out to uh, New Philadelphia, Ohio, and meet all of the people from the, the various groups. And uh, ever since that, every two years, we've been having meetings. Uh, it's very important that we keep our culture alive. Uh, people here from Poland or from uh, Iceland or Ireland or from any other place can always go back to those countries and learn their culture. Once we lose our language and culture, there's no place for us to go to relearn it. And so it's very important that uh, we keep our, our culture alive. Uh, the renaming of this site here is very important also because rather than have it in an English name, uh, it should be called in its original Lenape language. And so we're very happy today that this is going to happen. Uh, the thing that we are very sorry about is that uh, our people had to leave this area. If you look over here to your left, you'll see all the woods are still there. For the few Delaware or Lenape Indians that are surviving, uh, we could still be here living on our native land. But the uh, powers that be at that time wanted to ship us out and get us away from our, our land here. We were talking earlier before that uh, when we dedicate the uh, name, does that mean that we get the land back? But uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody answered me when I said that, so uh, I guess we have to let that one go by for this year, but we'll be back next year. Our second speaker is Chief Richard Snake, Lenape Chief of the Moravian Town Band of Ontario, Canada. Chief Richard Snake has become a leader and servant of his nation. For, three, uh, for almost three decades of service to his people in the capacity of chief, counselor, and band member. Culturally, Richard Snake has been the best liaison person and keeper of the culture for the Lenape Nation and has made numerous trips to visit other Delaware groups. He has been to Oklahoma, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Idaho, New York, as well as Muncie and six nations here in on and six nations in Ontario. His sharing of information has helped us, has helped to get together with the Delaware brothers from far and near. He is also one of the fluent speakers of the Delaware language and has been instrumental in getting funding for the teaching of Delaware language to the children and adults in Canada. <laughs> Kikasak at Happy Did You? Wala maka no 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 mona kilona was a lapi payang. One of the things I, I've said that it's it's an honor to come here back here again. Uh, our ancestors roamed this area uh, a few years, a few hundred years back, and uh, it's just great to be back here again. Uh, just one question, or not a question, but uh, I was kind of leery uh, yesterday. I was around Times Square and uh, at the rush hour, and I was going to uh, give praise to my ancestors for getting out of this city. So, uh, I brought a, a couple of two or three van loads of our people from here, from uh, from home, and this is their first visit here. So I think. Uh, if you see him across uh, the way or something, just uh, shake your hands and tell him welcome back. Thank you very much. Anishik. But this, of course, is the last of the natural parks in New York City, in Manhattan especially. And for many years in growing up here, I used to hear stories from my father and from others about how we had American Indians well into this century living in this park. And we've also heard stories of the American Indian caves and the fact that arrowheads have been found here and various other artifacts. And we all know that there was a school that actually adopted the name of Shurikopic. Only they pronounce it Shurikopic, which is not the, as I am told, the Lenape proper pronunciation. So when the community got together and the community board acted and the American Heritage Foundation came to me and, and said, well, perhaps we should recognize what has been here and, and recognize the American Indians' existence in this park, I thought it was a wonderful idea. It's therefore with particular delight 
that I come back to my current position in the borough of Manhattan, able to work with the many Native Americans who are part of this city, and then able today to recognize a piece of our land in the form in which you understand it and we understand it as land which is to be kept and preserved and as land which needs to name itself for this year and recognize its place in our geography. This is a proclamation and it says, whereas for the past decade, Inwood Hill Park has been the site of the annual Native American Heritage Day. And at this year's annual Native American Heritage Day Festival, the original Native American name will be restored to the last natural area of Inwood Hill Park in a special ceremony conducted by the descendants of the original inhabitants of Manhattan. And the name of this place is Shora Kapak, which means edge of the river or safe place. And in this ceremony, we are honoring the land and the descendants of the first people of the land, whose wish it was that the land be protected and that the spirits of the ancestors not be forgotten. Now, therefore, I, Ruth Messenger, President of the Borough of Manhattan, in honor of our Native American heritage, and to celebrate the 10th anniversary of this event, to hereby proclaim today, Saturday, September 19th, 1992, in the Borough of Manhattan, as Native American Heritage Day. Chief, will you come up and accept this? It gives me great, great pressure to join Stanley Michaels uh, in the City Council to give the official name uh, of this park. I first learned of the name Sharaka Park when I was a member of the school board. And I visited very often the school in this neighborhood, PS 98, that carried that name. And from there I knew the meaning of this name and how it connected to the natives, Native Americans who were first here uh, in this land. I am here also as a native who was born and raised in the island named Quisqueya, which is the native name of an island in the Caribbean, which also carries the, a native name of Haiti. And I've learned with pride that the heritage that the natives of the islands left for us still lives very much in every one of us. So when we think of 500 years after Europeans came to this continent, we have to think of the inheritance that we have, not only of Europeans, but of Native Americans and Africans as well. And it is the coming together of all of, the, all of those that make us precious and proud and with vision. The naming of this park today, and 500 years after the coming together of the different continents that make us what we are today, should be the type of message that we want to give our children our emerging generation. But this song is special for what has happened today, and we ask that the people who are sitting here to come down off the podium into this circle here, and the two head dancers are going to lead you around in this song, and you'll, you'll dance in the circle. This is your honoring song. <laughs>
we're by planting this tulip tree, we're rededicating this place to the to the history of what was here, to the village of Shore Kapok. And um, was it mentioned down on that side that this wooded area is now officially by city council legislation is going to be renamed the Shore Kapok <coughs> Wilderness Area, so or, or preserve I should say, not wilderness area. <coughs> so rather than dwelling on the past, hopefully this is a start. You know, there was a tree over there that died when it was 280 years old. Let this live for another 300 years in a different spirit, a, a spirit of understanding between cultures rather than a destruction or a, or a battle between two cultures. So I hope that's, that's a kind of message that this tree planting today uh, will, be, will be for all of us. <laughs>